Hi everybody, I'm going to tell you some crazy things, some wild things about truths that are lies and lies that are truth. Are you ready? Guy says, if you don't have anything nice to say, shut up you stupid idiot. Wait a minute. If you see the contradiction in there? Guy says to a Muslim woman, he says, you don't understand. I don't like Islam because it disrespects women, you stupid bitch. What? A Muslim gets on the site thinking I'm dissing Muslims because he sees I don't look like a Muslim. He sees my, you know, baiting titles that I use and says, you don't understand Islam. It's a totally peaceful religion, you stupid moron. I posted a video last week where I made a claim about a particular site that existed on YouTube. I said they were that they were specifically deleting good Muslim comments and keeping bad Muslim comments on there. When I made that statement, I had not confirmed it. That made me a liar. That made me a yellow journalist. I was a liar and a yellow journalist at that point because even though I thought I was trying to prove a bigger point, which I was, because I've seen things like this all the time, I wasn't totally factually accurate. I checked it out later and it's almost completely true, but it doesn't matter. When I said it, I hadn't confirmed it. it. made me a liar. So I told the truth, but at the time it was a lie because I didn't have 100% confirmation. People are walking around saying things that aren't true that they think might be true and they're spouting out like they're true. And I did it because I thought it was for a better good. Then some guy challenges me on it. And what do I do? I discounted him in my mind because I know he bashes Muslims. So because he didn't have credibility in my mind, I didn't give him the credit due because he asked a legitimate question about my sources. And because I don't out people, I specifically don't name names, if you've noticed. I don't name names about people either way. Because I don't name names and I don't like to stir up that sort of trouble with individuals because I'm, I'm going for big concepts here. I can hide behind that umbrella so I can make up a story and no one can disprove me. Because I can pick a fictitious item and if anybody asks me, I can say, well, I don't have to cite my sources. Because not only didn't I name anybody, I also don't out people. So it gives me two excuses to be a liar. So I have to be extra careful to watch my butt about lying. Just because someone, we don't consider them credible or we think that they're against us, that doesn't exclude or prevent us from having that same high responsibility for honesty. And anybody goes around saying they know anything 100% true, I already don't believe them because 100%s are pretty rare. And people throw, I know 100% true this, 100% true that. The people say Muhammad the prophet was, was a pedophile. It just dawned on me. I don't think pedophilia existed back then. Now, I'm sure people were having sex with little kids back then, but without the taboo, is it really pedophilia? Let me give you an example. There's a caveman and a cave woman in a cave together. They clothe themselves with animal fur. Would that man all of a sudden think, man, I want to dress like a woman. I want to strut around in drag and I want to put on a pelt that looks like a woman's pelt. It wouldn't happen because the taboo wasn't there. Back then, you could have sex with little kids because as soon as they were ripe and ready to go, they were mated with. And part of what a pervert likes, a pervert likes busting taboo. They like doing things that they know are wrong. That's part of the pleasure for a lot of perverts. So if, you're, if you don't know you're doing anything wrong and there is no crime because there's no taboo, before women's apparel came out, there never was a taboo about men dressing as women. The taboo got created because of the culture. Just a thought. Um, I get this video about Mexicans and immigrants and Muslims. It's a misleading title, but people don't watch the video. And in the name of peace, these kind-hearted people who think I'm being unjust and racist, the things they call me, all of a sudden we are the racist dirtbag scum that we're calling people on. This guy with a kind heart is saying that uh, I'm, I'm a dirty white piece of crap and Mexicans are better than me and all this. I'm like, and, and the guy's a good guy. He's just trying to make me feel bad because of the things I was saying, but he was wrong because he didn't do his research. And if you're gonna hate, at least do a little research before you hate. An angry Marine who assaulted me verbally and an angry Muslim, both really extreme, they both touted a higher ideal, an ideal that which they were not willing to conform to. They had rationalized that they were beyond conforming to the ideal that they upheld. Interesting. 
The ideal is good enough for everybody else. And I'm supporting this really high ideal, but I'm going to do it by breaking the rules of the ideals that I am standing for. Whether you be a, a military American soldier who's killing innocent Iraqis or a Taliban who's trying to make a plan to kill innocent Americans, either way, you're, you're using this ideal that you hold as a tool. You're not implementing the ideal. And if you're going to stand up for an ideal and you're not willing to implement the ideal in the process of standing up for it, who are you standing up for? The guy says to me, it says right here in the Quran that it's okay for Muslims to lie to their wives and their friends. Hmm. What if that one was out of context? So much, I'm so sick of this out of context. People giving me these Quran quotes, these inflammatory Quran quotes, and I always ask, hey, uh, what's the context of this quote? I mean, it seems like a fragment. Conversely, I mentioned how I could be telling a lie, but it could turn out to be the truth. I could also be telling the truth, something I believed that was the truth. It could turn out to be a lie because of misinformation. doesn't make me a liar. It makes it an untruth, but it doesn't make me a liar. So there's a situation where I could be telling a lie, and it could be true. I could be telling the truth, and it could be a lie. Another thing, confessions. Confessions from people who've been caught. We're always seeking, we catch somebody in a crime, in the middle of a crime, then we go for a confession. You know, I'd said this before, but once you've already been caught, it's not a confession anymore. It may be an admission. Better yet, a clarifying recap is what it is. So all of these things we built in our mind, it just, there's so many words. Oh, yeah, it's a free gift. There's no free gifts. There's no free lunches. I'll take you out. For free lunch. If you come in my town or if I'm in your town, we'll go out for a free lunch and it'll be a real free lunch, but it won't be free because you'll be feeling guilty and then you want to take me out for lunch. So even if I offer you a free lunch, it's not a free lunch, but I don't want you to feel guilty, but I know you will. Two guys are robbing a liquor store and two cops break in on them. They both draw their guns. One shoots a cop. The other guy shoots a cop. The cops both drop. In the morning, one of the cops died. One of the cops lived. One of the burglars is a murderer. The other is an attempted murderer. One guy gets treated like a murderer. The other guy gets treated like an attempted murderer when they both had the intent to shoot the guy. So truth is a funny thing.